Hey Shagheads, welcome to another adventure of a Shaggy Duck Life. I'm Curtis Tucker, aka Shags, living the American dream here in small town Enid, Oklahoma. Follow along as I entrepreneur from home and show you what life is like in Midwest America. Enjoy my everyday stories about family, my hometown, making money online, growing a lifestyle brand, creating content, anything 70s and more. And tonight's episode is going to be called, it's a Jeep thing, and then maybe something after that, I'm not sure. But tonight, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about owning a Jeep. And even if you don't like Jeeps or you're not a Jeep owner, uh, please listen up because this is kind of a cool uh, deal as far as like branding and community and bringing all that stuff together. Uh, Jeep has got to be one of the best brands out there, one of the best uh, followings out there. And so I'm going to give you guys some of the details on that, owning a Jeep and some kind of all the cool things. Uh, if you've ever thought about getting a Jeep, maybe I can talk you into becoming a Jeeper and being one of us. So uh, a little bit of news before I get started. I just got some new stickers in. And um, so this is the latest sticker. It is my Shags sticker for curtistucker.com and so this podcast a shaggy duck life goes hand in hand with curtistucker.com which is the blog uh, that goes with the podcast and then also shaggyduck.com my studio forwards over to uh, curtistucker.com and i'm trying to keep all of that over there together so anyway if you guys uh, like this sticker and you guys want one i will send you one a uh, car sticker free of charge. All you have to do is email me at curtis at shaggyduck.com and uh, include your address and I will uh, get one of these in the mail to you. And maybe, I, I guess I need to create a new email address, shags at shaggyduck.com. I think I will work on that this week. But anyway, for now, uh, email curtis at shaggyduck.com. So, um, so speaking of Jeep, so my, my Jeep history goes back to uh, probably college, high school, college. Um, wasn't super duper interested in Jeeps, but I always thought they were cool. And I guess I never really thought uh, that I could own one. And so back in the 70s and 80s, uh, there was that 60 minute special on Jeeps, the old CJ kind of Jeeps. And it was the episode where it talked about how easy Jeeps are to roll over. And so because of that, I don't think I thought my mom would probably allow me to ever own a Jeep. And uh, so I just never really thought about it. But then as I got into college and uh, the later years after college, uh, Jeeps got a lot better. Uh, they, they got lower to the ground, got a little wider. So definitely a lot harder to roll a Jeep uh, than basically back in the 70s. Now in the 70s, you could be going down the highway and just turn the Jeep really quick and you could roll it, tip it over. The Jeeps today, you pretty much, you know, have to be rock climbing or going up a hill. Uh, you know, they're not that easy to turn over anymore. So anyway, so the body styles changed. They started adding a lot of features. They came out with the CJ7s. Uh, CJ7 stands for Civilian Jeep. And uh, they came out with the CJ5s and the CJ7s. And uh, after I got out of college, um, I think I was in between cars and I was trying to decide what kind of a vehicle I wanted. And I remember seeing a white CJ7, had a really cool intricate, uh, in, intricate, in, why can't I say that word? Um, intricate design, eagle design on the hood. And uh, I thought it was really cool and it was for sale and it was really a pretty good price. And so that was the first Jeep I bought, it was a 1981 CJ7. And I drove that for several years and uh, it had a hard top, but you know, it was still kind of plain Jane, uh, heater and the air conditioner didn't work too well, you know, a lot of wind coming through. Um, just you know, still kind of a kind of a bare bones Jeep, and then uh, I found a 1984 soft top CJ7 black with huge tires on it, knobby tires, really cool looking, really sporty looking, and so I sold the white one and bought the black one, 
and uh, drove the black CJ7 for a lot of years. So unfortunately, living in Oklahoma, one of the big things in Oklahoma is the wind. And after several years of driving a CJ7 with a soft top, uh, you do get a little bit tired of the wind. And so eventually I sold, and then I think I was doing a lot of traveling. And uh, no, I think that was when, actually that was when I found out that I could afford a Corvette. And I believe I sold my 84 CJ7 and bought a 74 uh, Corvette Stingray. So anyway, but anyway, so that was my last uh, foray into the Jeep scene for a while. Uh, you know, had a job, got married, had kids. Um, this was before the four-door Jeeps had come out, so it just wasn't practical. Now, I did have uh, Jeep Cherokees over the years as well, um, a couple of those through the years. I don't, so even though they're Jeep, you know, manufactured, when I, when I say Jeep, I'm talking like CJ7s and Wranglers, so that's, what, that's mainly what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I, you know, with a family, you didn't really want to have a Jeep. Uh, you couldn't really take it on vacation, especially just a two door. Um, but anyway, so I eventually, uh, I have started my business, Shaggy Duck and Enid Buzz. And at one point, uh, I was needing a new vehicle. And instead of going out and buying a vehicle and having to get a loan, I had gone to a car dealer and I did a trade with them where they provided me a vehicle, a leased vehicle for free. And then I was trading out advertising for them and they gave me a Chevy Equinox, which was perfect for family, you know, hauling the kids around and going on vacation and being able to haul stuff. So I drove that for two years and then they decided to stop uh, running the deal with me and so I just kept the Equinox because it had my decals and my logo and, and everything on it but um, not unfortunately but fortunately uh, several months after my deal ran out with them a gentleman pulled out in front of me uh, just about a block from my house and I smashed into him and tore up the front end of the Equinox well, I had it in the shop for several weeks thinking they were going to fix it and I was going to get it back. And uh, to my surprise and glee, they told me that they were going to total the Equinox. And at that point, I was like, oh, wow, how cool is that? I get to get a new vehicle. And when I had bought it from them, they had given me a really good deal. So there was actually some equity built into the Equinox when they totaled it. So, so I got the money for the accident, paid off the Equinox and had, I think about $3,000 cash, if not a little bit more in hand. And I just happened to, I think, be looking for other cars and found uh, a Jeep Wrangler and, and you know the Wranglers have really become really sporty really nice a lot of features when you're driving a Wrangler uh, it's almost as nice as a really nice truck and and some vehicles and so so I went and I looked at another white I wasn't particularly looking for a white one but this one was just I don't know the this one that I saw it was a 2013 um, Wrangler and it just had the perfect wheels, the perfect tires. Um, a lot of white Jeep Wranglers have black fender flares. This one had white so it, it's basically all white except the hard top is black. Um, and so it just, I think because of the fender flares being white, it made it stand out a little bit more and then also having the really cool tires on it. So I fell in love with it and it really didn't cost that much, especially with the $3,000 down. And so I bought it and that's where, uh, because in I had owned my other two Jeeps in the 90s and maybe into the 2000s, early 2000s, but um, the whole Jeep community thing uh, has really taken off here in probably the last several years. And so I was completely unaware of all the really cool things that having a Jeep entails now. And so that's kind of what I'm going to go over with you guys now, how cool it is to own a Jeep. 
and be a part of this this Jeep community. And so one of the big things, uh, or just real quick, a little history on Jeeps. Uh, Jeeps, I think, uh, were created around 1940, World War II. They were uh, war vehicles. I believe the design was slapped together in two days. They were meant to be uh, easily put together, have guys jump in them, uh, be able to go over all kinds of terrain. Um, they served their purpose in the war. They brought them back and then eventually, um, I believe, or I think at that time, the company building them was a company by a man named Willis. Now, his last name was spelled W-I-L-L-Y apostrophe S, and so a lot of people call him Willies. Uh, actually, that's the wrong pronunciation. Uh, Jeep original designer was Willis, uh, Mr. Willis, and so the original Jeeps were called Willis's. Um, and uh, so, so anyway, when they, when they brought the design uh, back to America and brought the Jeeps back to America, they decided to come out with a civilian model, which is the CJ uh, model, uh, civilian Jeep. And so the CJs were uh, what originally started and people started driving around. And so, and then actually the name Jeep, there's actually no official um, explanation as to where the name Jeep came from. Yeah. Guys, if you guys are listening to the podcast, uh, this also is on video on my YouTube channel, CurtisTucker.com. If you can see behind me, I have a, a Jeep button behind me. Uh, so anyway, but the word Jeep, J-E-E-P, there is actually no uh, bona fide explanation of where it came from. Several theories. One of the theories is that uh, in the beginning, they were called general purpose or um, governmental purpose vehicles, which is GP. And so they think, you know, maybe the guys, the military guys, uh, calling them GPs, GPs, Jeep, you know, Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. And so the GP became Jeep. Or uh, back in the day, in the 40s, uh, Popeye, the Popeye cartoon, you know, the, the sailor man that ate spinach, there was a creature in the Popeye cartoon named Jeep. And it was this, this half dog, half cat creature that could go just about anywhere. And not only was he called Jeep, but the only word that this creature said was the word Jeep. And they think that maybe the name Jeep could have come from that cartoon because this creature was so diversified and able to go anywhere. Uh, so anyway, so those are kind of two of the main theories of where the word, word um, Jeep came from. But um, so as far as Jeep, the cool thing about Jeeps is um, think about Harley Davidson and motorcycles. Think of how they have these events and, and when they pass each other, they, they do that low wave and how there's a lot of accessories and there's just, there's just a lot of community and a lot of stuff built around Harleys. Well, it's the exact same thing with Jeep. So, so when you're thinking of that type of community for vehicles, Jeep is probably one of the top, if not the top, um, community built vehicles out there. Um, and so, uh, so real quick, um, well, I'm just going to kind of get into all the cool things that I've experienced and other people have experienced by owning a Jeep. So one of the first things that I learned that I was not aware of was Jeep likes to hide what they call Easter eggs. And so when you think of an Easter egg, an Easter egg is something hidden that you search for. And so Jeep, they take um, these little mini Jeep silhouettes. It's either the word Jeep or the grill with the headlights or you know just something Jeep and on different models they hide these little logos on the Jeep somewhere and so it could be in the um, the drink holder I know the windshields have a little Jeep um, I think the the grill and the the headlights in the corner of the glass so if you if you buy a Jeep and you don't see that logo on the glass it probably means the glass has been replaced now my Jeep uh, 2013 I'm on my third windshield um, and so I don't know if that's a common problem with Jeeps because they're more up and down and when something hits them, they get chipped rather than, you know, where most windshields are a little bit angled and things kind of bounce off and go over. I think Jeeps take the brunt of things. So anyway, so the, one of the really cool things about when you get a Jeep is to search 
all over your Jeep and see if you can find all of the little hidden Easter eggs. Uh, the only one that I have found on my Jeep, uh, because the windshield has been replaced, um, I did find, I believe, the grill and the two, um, uh, the two headlights. Um, I'm going to take one quick little break. Hang on, pause. Okay, quick little pause there. Um, I'm glad this is called a Shaggy Duck Life and it's kind of behind the scenes of working at Shaggy Duck Studio. And so I knew without a doubt 1000% that if I started this podcast and this video that um, my our new puppy would want to come out here to my studio and interrupt the middle of the podcast. And so anyway, uh, and I will probably have a full podcast episode about um, dealing with a new puppy in case some of you are wondering if you should get a puppy. But anyway, so uh, had to open the door, had to stop and open the door and let the puppy in. So now he's, Graham is cruising around the studio uh, playing with his toys. And so I apologize for the little break there, but that is part of working from home in a studio connected to your house. So anyway, to continue on with the Jeep, um, you know, uh, the Easter egg thing is what I was talking about, and I've only found the one Easter egg in uh, my cup holder. Uh, another cool thing about Jeeps is almost all Jeep owners, uh, now I know a lot of car owners do the same thing, but almost every Jeep owner names their Jeep. And so, um, and the really cool thing about Jeeps is the hood, you know, uh, sits up really high and has the two sides and it's just perfect for putting the name of your Jeep along the side of your hood on both sides. And so I recently, uh, actually just this week, well, yesterday I got the decals for my Jeep. I re-stickered it with the Shaggy Duck, everything Shags and Shaggy Duck now and um, renamed my Jeep. So the Equinox that I'd had was really meant to be for Enid Buzz and it had really big Enid Buzz stickers and everything on it and so we nicknamed it the Buzzmobile and so because it was uh, you know lost in the car wreck and I needed to continue on with a Buzzmobile when I first got my Jeep I got a decal and I had um, the Buzzmobile put on the side of it but as I went along and I'm transitioning out of that buzz guy and trying to get more into shags and a shaggy duck life, I decided to rename the Jeep. And so I was thinking of all these different names and, and I've kind of got this Scooby-Doo theme going on. You know, it's, it's partly 70s and shaggy duck and words used from Scooby-Doo. Um, so I, I, there was a lot of Scooby-Doo names. Um, if you guys remember, one of the things that Daphne on Scooby-Doo always says was Jeepers. And so I thought um, Jeepers might be kind of fun, but actually the word Jeepers is the name that we call people that own Jeeps. And so I didn't want to do that. Um, one of the things that we'll get to here in a minute has to do with rubber ducks. And so I thought about uh, calling uh, my Jeep Ducky because it is white. Uh, my company is Shaggy Duck. Uh, but then then it just dawned on me uh, that I just needed to go with the Duckmobile. And so I uh, just got new decals and I'll put these. Uh, I'll probably do a blog post and have this podcast and video embedded on that. And then I'll have pictures of the decals and pictures of my Jeep. It's a white 2013 uh, Wrangler. I think I told you guys that. Yep, I did. Um, so anyway, so my Jeep is called the Duckmobile. And, and what you'll notice is uh, almost all Jeep owners name their Jeep. So what, that's kind of a cool deal. And, and then again, the people that own Jeeps are called Jeepers. So one of the things that I've always said, like you guys, I call you guys Shagheads. And the people that follow me on Enid Buzz, I call them Buzzheads. And it's always cool to name your followers, to give them their own identity, and that kind of helps build their community and um, bring them closer together. And so, uh, so anyway, so that's just kind of a fun deal. Another fun deal of being a Jeep owner is being a Jeeper. And um, gosh, I knew I was going to say something right there and I forgot. Um, anyway, uh, continuing on, uh, going with the Duck, so, so it's the Duckmobile, and the cool thing that I learned getting my 2013 that I hadn't known about before, because I'm not sure what year it started, and I think it started in Canada, is somebody started ducking Jeeps, and it's called, um, I think it's called Duck Duck Jeep? Jeep Jeep Duck. No, Ju Duck Duck Jeep, I think. 
Um, but anyway, it's, uh, you're, you get ducked. And so what happens is uh, Jeep owners will buy rubber ducks, those, the, just the little rubber ducks. I don't have one in here with me. Um, but they'll buy little rubber ducks, keep them in their Jeep, and when they see a Jeep that they really like that impresses them, they will put a rubber duck under the windshield of a Jeep that they like. And then a lot of them, when the thing first started, there would be like a little rubber band with a note explaining what, you know, why you were getting Jeeped and it was, or ducked. And it was because, you know, hey, I really like your Jeep and to show you, make you smile, I am ducking your Jeep. Um, so I have started ducking other Jeeps, but I don't, uh, my dog is playing with his bone. Hopefully you can't hear it. Um, but um, I don't include the instructions because I think it's starting to get well known enough that people don't need to add the instructions anymore. Now the first, now I've been ducked twice and the first, and I mean literally uh, just within a month or two, I got my first duck. Um, and, and fortunately, that first duck that I got ducked with did have the instructions on it, so I knew what was going on. And so that's, that's another cool thing about being a Jeep owner uh, and just helping spread the brand of a Jeep is, uh, you know, it, we're just, uh, the, you, you kind of, not everybody's going to love Jeeps. Not everybody's going to want to own a Jeep. They, they can be bumpy. They can be, I mean, you know, if you have a two-door, you're not going to get a whole lot of people in them. So there are, you know, there are going to be downsides to a Jeep, but the people that love Jeeps, you know, it seems like most of us are kind of like outdoorsy, um, just love sunshine, smiling, happy. Uh, I think they've done some studies where Jeep owners are actually happier people. Um, but anyway, it's just the whole ducking thing is just another way of adding to the happiness of fellow Jeep owners. Um, and then actually the phrase, it's a Jeep thing, is, is a phrase that, uh, that's been said. And so you, you might be doing something and somebody might ask you, you know, what, hey, why are you doing that? And the only explanation that you might have for it is, it, it's a Jeep thing, you wouldn't understand. And that's kind of how the phrase goes. And so that's kind of what this episode is about. Um, and so hopefully I'm telling you guys a whole bunch of stuff about Jeeps that maybe you guys did not know. And, um, you know, again, it's just a cool way of building community, which just kind of adds to the fun of being a Jeep owner. Uh, let's see. So the word Jeeping is actually a sport in itself now. And so one of the cool things about having a Jeep is they are four wheel drive and they're made to go off road. And so when you go off road, as a lot of people call that Jeeping and or bogging if, if it includes a lot of water, um, trail riding, things like that. But Jeeping is its own sport. And so people do go Jeeping in their Jeeps. Uh, one of the funnest things that I've ever done here in Northwest Oklahoma, we've got a little area called Little Sahara, and it, it literally is like the Sahara Desert, but it's a small version. A lot of sudden, hey, stop. I am podcasting, Mr. Nah. Another behind the scenes with Graham the Puppy Dog. Hey, play with your toys. Don't play with the bone right now, okay? Or I'm going to put you on the episode, Mr. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, so um, uh, the Little Sahara, and so it's sand dunes in a, in, I mean, it's, it's several, several, several acres big, but um, uh, f it's fun taking a Jeep over there and going over the sand dunes. Another cool thing about being a Jeep owner and having a Jeep is it's the only, uh, well, I don't know, I'm not sure Ford Bronco, I don't think you could take the top off a two-door, I'm not sure, but, um, Anyway, before the Ford Bronco or even today, it's the only SUV uh, where you can remove the top completely, which is pretty cool. It's the only vehicle that you can completely remove the doors. Now, the cool thing about Jeep doors is you can take the full doors off and then there are re replaceable half doors, which I always like. So in my 1984 Jeep, I would take the full doors off and I bought half doors. And so the half door, basically gives you a door up to about the, the seat level, and then you can kind of put your elbow on it, and there's no windshield, and there's no top frame, but it's kind of cool. That's one of my favorite looks on a Jeep, is having the half doors. And so the only vehicle you can take the doors completely off, and for some of you that may not know, and 
if you've seen in the old green army jeeps, even the new modern jeeps, you can actually put the windshield down. So when you are out trailing and you want to get, you know, the wind in your face, or you don't want your windshield to get broken with flying rocks and things like that, you actually can lay uh, the jeep windshields down. Hey, buddy, stop playing with the bone on the floor. Mister, I knew, I knew as soon as I started recording this, he was gonna come out here. Hey, hang on everybody. I'm not gonna turn this off. I'm gonna go over there and get his bone. And it's a very loud bone. Buddy, if you're gonna play with his bone, it's gotta be over here on the carpet. So, um, hope you guys are having fun listening to me uh, dealing with my puppy uh, again. Look for an upcoming episode of Dealing with a New Puppy. Graham, don't go putting that back on the floor. Okay, so other things about Jeeps. Uh, wh wh one of the things that I love about Jeeps is you can take them almost anywhere and you can park them almost anywhere. So if you go to like a concert or a sporting event and the parking is really bad, uh, it's always cool to have a Jeep because you can pop up on a curb and park in grass or on an incline or something like that where most other vehicles uh, either can't or the vehicle owners aren't going to take their vehicle. So always fun having a Jeep when you need to park somewhere. Uh, again, I talked about the four wheel. Um, you know, you, you can uh, put it in four wheel drive and you can go through mud, uh, up hills, uh, you know, on slick surfaces. They're great to drive in the winter on the snow. Um, actually, when it snows and you're a Jeep owner, you you want to go get in your Jeep and go drive around. I mean, whereas most people, when it snows, they're like, I'm gonna stay inside and I'm not gonna drive until most of the snow goes away and they try to avoid the snow. As a Jeep owner, we look forward to the snow just so we can go out and do spinny things in, in parking lots and, and just cruise around everywhere that we can in the Jeep. Um, you can drive them in almost any weather if uh, it's really raining and, uh, you know, some areas of somewhere are flooding. Um, usually Jeeps sit higher, especially my Jeep sits a little higher because of the bigger tires, but Jeeps um, sit up a little higher. Uh, and so you can drive through large puddles of water, uh, whereas uh, other vehicles you cannot. Um, some of the cool things about Jeeps, when the community gets together, there are things called Jeep Jamborees. There's even a thing called a Jeep Safari. And so these are big, huge events where, uh, and, if, and if, you'll, if you'll look around, now not a lot of small towns, but mid-sized to big towns, they have Jeep clubs. And so there's not, you know, I think there's Corvette clubs and Mustang clubs. And so there are different cars that have their own clubs, but most especially in, you know, in the areas where there's a lot of areas to, to four-wheel drive, there's almost always going to be a Jeep club. And so that's another way to bring the community together. Um, when, you, when you park somewhere, if somebody knows, if they're driving a Jeep and they know you're the one that is driving the other Jeep in the parking lot, they will seek you out and talk to you. It's always a great conversation starter. Jeeps are great to take the tops off and take your pets, especially your dogs for a drive. People love seeing the dogs sitting in a Jeep while you're out cruising in the sunshine with the top off. Um, and the cool, another cool thing is all the aftermarket parts and modifications that you can do on a Jeep. And so you can, so I've got a hard top, but I can take my hard top off and then I've got a netting over the top of me that keeps big limbs and leaves and stuff like that. Or you can put um, covers on, half covers, full covers, uh, that don't have any sides, but if it were to start sprinkling, or if you didn't want the sun on your head, it blocks, it gives you some shade. Um, there's, enough, there's enough aftermarket parts that you could take a hard top off of a Jeep and put all these different little, you know, side doors and, and tops and, and backseat covers and things. You could literally almost cover a Jeep completely, um, even without the top on. And then even if you didn't get it covered all the way and it rains, Jeeps are meant to get wet. And so if it rains, you know, for a couple hours into your Jeep, uh, you just, I think there, there's little plugs and you just open them up and, and let the water drain out. And then the seats and all the carpet in Jeeps are meant to get wet and they will dry out and, and the Jeep will be fine. So uh, another cool thing about a Jeep is if you keep the top on, you keep it in the garage, you try to keep it nice, it can be really, it can be kept really nice or you can take the top off, get it out there, get it dusty, get it dirty, take it to car wash, spray it out, and uh, it'll be just fine. So 
Uh, you don't have to, you know, treat it with kit gloves, you know, if you're out four-wheeling or getting muddy or any of that stuff. Um, one of the things that I found out that I did not know is Jeep is the most Instagrammed car on the market. I would think that it's got to be one of the highest uh, search for hashtags on Twitter as far as a vehicle as well. Um, here's a sidebar uh, that I found out also. Now this doesn't have to do with the Jeep, what I call Wrangler, but um, the, the Jeep uh, station wagon, when it originally came out, that's where the word tailgating came from, was from Jeeps. Uh, people would take their Jeeps and put the tailgate down and have parties at the back of their Jeep wagons, and so that is where the word tailgating from. Uh, and then one of the biggest things about owning a Jeep, I, I think I skipped over, but that's okay because uh, then I can end it or get towards the end with this, is the Jeep Wave. And so like I had said, if you're, if you're a Harley rider or if you notice when two motorcycle riders pass each other, a lot of times they'll kind of put their hand down or, or two fingers and it's kind of a wave as they pass each other. Well, Jeep owners do the same thing, only you, know, you might have your hand on your steering wheel and you, you just raise two fingers, or you put your hand out, or you just, you just wave. Uh, what I've noticed is some people are doing now is their uh, Jeeps have the side view mirrors that stick out, that are pretty large and stick out on the sides. Some people are actually putting decals of a hand that looks like it's waving on their rear, or on their side view mirror, but uh, those people even go ahead and wave. So, so the thing about Jeeps is if you have a Jeep that looks like a Wrangler. Now the, the new Jeep, so the, the Jeep Wrangler, the Jeep four-door, and now the new Jeep uh, truck, and I can't remember what they're calling those, but it looks like a Jeep in front, but has a Jeep in back. Those are kind of the, the type of Jeeps that do the wave. And, and like I said, you know, basically uh, every time you pass a Jeep, uh, you, you give the wave, and i am even gotten so bad and so used to it that if I'm driving my wife's car, a lot of times I feel I'll either wave at a Jeep or give the two finger or want to, and then I'll re remember, oh, I'm not in a Jeep, and they're, they're gonna wonder what the heck I'm doing. So uh, just another one of the fun parts of being in the Jeep community, and um, you know, this episode not only talks about Jeeps, but I think it's about branding. I mean, think what a cool brand Jeep has come up with, with all the community and the names and the slogans and, and the words and, and even the, the front of a Jeep, which actually was created by Ford, the grill marks, and I think there's seven these days, and then the two round headlights, that, the grill, is their logo. If you notice, Jeeps, Jeeps don't have a Jeep logo or an icon or something on the front of the Jeep because the distinguishing mark of a Jeep is the grill and the two headlights. And so um, w another thing that I learned is there was a large uh, period in there, which I believe ended in 95, there was about a 10 year span where Jeep was trying to get away from the CJ7s, I believe, and kind of kind of reinvent themselves with the Wranglers and they, they went to a square headlight. Um, I can pretty much promise you I probably am never going to own a Jeep with a square headlight. Uh, to me, you know, it just, you don't get the signature Jeep look. And so, uh, but then there are, um, there are a lot of uh, Jeeps out there with square headlights. They are not heavily sought after, I don't think. And, and they are older, you know, I, like I said, it stopped in 95. So they're gonna be older Jeeps. Um, I did also find out that they're, uh, don't go searching for a 1996 Jeep, uh, basically just because of the lateness of when the 96s came out, it was actually 97, and the others had ended in 95, so there actually is not a, uh, a 1996 Jeep. Uh, another thing about Jeeps you may not know is there is not a standalone Jeep manufacturing company. Jeep has always been owned by some other car manufacturing company like Chrysler or Daimler or um, Willis or, so they've never been a standalone company on their own. So uh, that's kind of a cool little fact about Jeeps. Um, I think that's probably pretty much it. Um, I didn't mean to bore you guys with, uh, 
with Jeep talk, but uh, I thought it might be kind of cool if you guys didn't know. Uh, again, it's just kind of fun owning a Jeep and having the Jeep wave and, and getting ducked. Uh, getting ducked, hopefully that will become kind of a bigger thing and uh, people will get more creative with what they're doing with the ducks. Um, hopefully I will get extra ducked because my Jeep is called the Duck Mobile. And so I'm looking forward to that. So um, even if you, I'm going to throw this out there, if you are not a Jeep owner, but you really like Jeeps, uh, throw some rubber ducks into your car. And when you go to a restaurant or someplace and you see a Jeep sitting somewhere, duck, duck the Jeep uh, just to let the Jeep owner know that you, uh, you like their Jeep. And, and, and then I kind of touched on it, the modifications. Uh, one of the cool things about Jeeps is people modify them to fit their personality. I mean, you know, they change out lights and they add, you know, spotlights or they add bigger tires or different wheels or different, um, you know, uh, just bumpers, uh, winches, you can, uh, tie, tire covers on the back have all kinds of logos. And so there's just so many different ways that you can express yourself with a Jeep uh, that, that makes them really fun. And so not only are you, you know, showing that you're kind of an outdoorsy, you know, type of person by driving a Jeep, but doing your modifications like on mine, being the Duck Mobile with my Shaggy Duck logo, my uh, Shags logo. I've also uh, got the Enid Buzz logo now on the on the windshield. And again, I'll try to get those pictures on the blog to go along with uh, this episode. So I'm going to probably keep this one a little bit short. My dog, my puppy Graham, is licking my hand. He obviously wants something. I'm going to have to get off here and figure out what the heck he wants. So be looking for an upcoming episode on uh, puppies because uh, it's kind of an eye-opening deal, um, kind of like uh, being a Jeep owner. You know, we had gone uh, over 11 years without owning a pet, and there was, you know, always had a reason uh, that we didn't need another dog, and uh, now that we've got him, I kind of remember why we didn't have a dog, but then I also am regretting that maybe we didn't have a dog for those 11 years. So anyway, I'll go over that. But uh, if you are a Jeep owner and you're listening to this episode, there would be nothing that would thrill me more than to pull up bef behind a fellow Jeep and seeing this on the back uh, uh, of your Jeep. Now that's another cool thing is uh, the back of Jeeps, the, the windshield, there's a lot of area back there, and it's very easy to see because when you pull up behind a Jeep, you are you are just right up against it, and so you can see all of the decals and the stickers, and so I've got them running up and down both sides of my Jeep, and so that's another fun thing is to express yourself through the stickers on the back of your Jeep, and it would be so cool if you would put one of these Shags stickers on the back of your Jeep. So uh, email me, Curtis, at shaggyduck.com. Send me your address and I will get one of these uh, handy dandy window decals out to you and I'll get it in the mail. So anyway, you guys, thanks. You can uh, again email me at curtis at shaggyduck.com. Don't forget to watch these episodes uh, video wise at Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. Uh, also, the blog is curtistucker.com. I appreciate you guys so much for uh, taking your time to listen to my podcast. I hope you're enjoying uh, all my journaling. And again, don't forget, I'm just a guy, just an average guy, just like you guys, trying to let you guys know what it's like to live here in Oklahoma in the middle of America. I hope some of you guys uh, are living outside of the United States. And, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be a couple episodes where I'll just strictly talk about what it's like to live in Oklahoma, what it's like to live in America for the people that don't live here. And so lots of show ideas I've got coming up and uh, we'll just keep going. So you guys have a great day. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.